Hi, everyone. So um, this is something seriously wrong with you. You'll probably notice I'm not uh, Ginny Bryan. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ginny tested positive for COVID. And I volunteered to do slide karaoke for her. So I have never seen these slides before. <laughs> uh, I am, however, familiar with the topic. So we should be going. And I will say that uh, Jenny developed these slides knowing that I will be delivering them live with no preparation. So there may be some <laughs> surprises along the way. <laughs> and hopefully this will take me about 20 minutes, but we'll see. OK, so the point of this talk really is to announce that there's a new version, a new edition of the R Packages book. Uh, I wrote the first edition. Jenny contributed most of the second edition. Uh, really, I think, updating it for the, the, the things that the things, the ways that our, our package development workflow has changed. And also to introduce some new, uh, like this new whole game chapter that Jenny wrote which really introduces you to the whole flow of developing a package, which we really strongly believe that with like dev tools and use this and Roxygen and test that is like really, really easy these days. Like if it takes you longer than like 60 seconds to create a package, something is wrong with your workflow. Now obviously, uh, you know, that's not gonna be much of a package in 60 seconds, but it's get, gonna get you started and onto more things. So in this slide, <laughs> uh, you will see, I think, you know, there's, yeah, so we worked, so the, the, the first edition of our packages, like really, you can see kicked off in like 2015, and nothing really happened for like five years, basically, with this book, it just sat. It was, you know, live, people were using it, but it wasn't being updated, even as the practices that we in the Tidyverse team were using. So a couple of years ago, I was like, we probably should really update this. And hey, Jenny, you know, you do lots of package development. Uh, wouldn't you love to write a book? And Jenny, because she had never written a book before, said, yes, I would love to do that. <laughs> uh, I think she has some level of regret about that. But overall, I think we're very, very happy uh, with the second edition. and. I believe that Ginny will not be writing any other books in the future. <laughs> okay. Ooh, wow. <laughs> so Ginny has uh, really been pushing the limits of Keynote uh, recently. <laughs> but the, the, the second edition really is, you know, it's a lot bigger, I think. So we've doubled the number of pages. We've doubled the number of authors. And we've done something to the number of chapters, which is very hard to see due to this extremely deceptive 3D bar chart. <laughs> I will tell you one really cool thing about 3D bar charts, and that is, uh, if you want to know, like, the first time, or the first time I know of, that someone, like, railed about how bad 3D bar charts were, there's this really cool paper from, like, the 1940s saying, like, don't use 3D bar charts. And that just blows my mind because it wasn't just like pick a setting and keynote, it's like go away and draw three, like who wants to draw 3D bar charts by hand? <laughs> so what's changed in the last eight years? So. Jenny has really outdone herself with the graphics. Uh, these were not produced with ggplot2, I should add. Oh, I have to pick up the pace. OK. OK, so really, 2015, three main packages. Since then, the number of packages has really exploded as, uh, I think, I forget what we, we, the conscious uncoupling of dev tools into smaller packages. Uh, again, you know, you only need to get use this or dev tools, that gives you all these tools, but behind the scenes a much, much richer uh, thing. So if there's only th one thing you take away from this talk, it's that the, I think the easiest, highest impact thing you can do for a package is to give it a website, and you can do that in one minute. Like you can get a decent website for your package in under a minute. You can certainly spend much more time on it to make it awesome, but a massive payout 
just for that one line of code. So uh, Davis was joking earlier that Jenny was just going to have a, a slide that said live demo, but she did make a video. And so here is a video uh, showing uh, a little bit of the package development workflow. Uh, we've got vignettes. We've got R files. Uh, we've, we don't seem to have any tests in here. Uh, but this is a pretty simple package, right? With just one function and one vignette, and it's going to be pretty easy to turn this into a website. We've already passed our command check. That's, you know, really good, uh, good, good practice to be doing. Uh, it's well formed, and uh, I think we're really ready to do something fun on the next line. Fun and amazing. And that is we're going to call use package down. Now that's going to create some basic metadata. Uh, not much excitement going on here with this metadata, uh, but we can also do that with an add-in if we want. Uh, and that add-in is going to build the package. It's going to take the contents of the package, combine it with that metadata, and it's going to make a bunch of HTML files for us. And that gives us this basic website. We've got a reference page. Every, we've got a reference index. Every function gets its own web page. All the examples get run. They get hyperlinked. They get nicely syntax highlighted. Similarly for the vignettes, they get built in a way that you can really, really easily share for others. Everything is cross-linked and, hype and uh, uh, footnotes get turned into nice pop-ups and you can click on things and things happen. <laughs> now, if you use uh, GitHub, uh, if your package is in the open, there's even better, you can call use package down GitHub pages. What this is going to do is automate the whole process of building that website. It's going to call uh, package down build site for you every single time your site changes, and it's going to publish it to GitHub pages. So this is seriously like a one-minute workflow to get your website up on the internet where you can share it with others. GitHub, this uses GitHub Actions, uh, which is a really great tool that, that ensures your code doesn't just work in the one place where you wrote it, but also works on other, some other random computer on the internet. And the chances are if it works in two places, it's going to work in just about any places. Uh, a bunch of actions are kind of built in, check standard. Uh, is going to run our command check and combine all of these cool packages that you have locally with the power of GitHub. What else is new in the R packages second edition? Uh, lots of expanded coverage on the workflows, like what is it that we actually do? Uh, lots more diagrams and updated diagrams. Uh, one of the, I think one of the things that's really changed in the last five years for us uh, there are practices around testing, things like code coverage, uh, how ideas about how to organize our tests. These are now written up uh, in our packages in a way that is hopefully easy for you to read and understand and learn about. We've also learned a lot more about how you look after the package in the long term, how you manage the process of releases, how you deal with CRAN in the way that is uh, as helpful for you and as helpful for them as possible. So I think this is my favorite new chapter. This is all 100% Jenny work. Uh, this is the whole game. This is really showing you, like if you've never made a package before, if you've got no idea why you'd want to make a package, here's how you can go from that function you have in a random R file and get it into a form that's easy for you to share with others. It's, that's easy, to, that's documented, that's tested, that's in Git, and then is hopefully being checked automatically by GitHub Actions. So building on top of that, like a lot of the time, you're not going to start from a clean, completely clear slate. You are going to start uh, by trying to get the, get the package that exists inside of your code currently out into the world. And so really focusing on like what's the difference between writing code and a script that's what you do all the time as a data scientist. How is it going to change? When you, how do you need to think about code differently as you move to create a package instead of a script? Lots more information about how a package is structured, uh, more information about the various ways your package transitions from various different states. 
you know, how does your, you're very used to using installed up packages to get a get package from CRAN onto your computer. You, you're familiar with using library to get a package that's installed on your computer into memory on a current R. All of those things change a little bit when you start developing your own package because now you're going to have the source version of a package on your computer. You're not installing it from CRAN, you are building it from scratch. And your life, uh, there's certainly ways to do this without DevTools. Uh, they are painful and horrible, uh, in my biased opinion, and DevTools was really designed to make those problems go away. I still remember like the first time I taught package development, it was like a two-day workshop. I turned up and I was like, okay, now go to the terminal and type r command build, and people were like, what's a terminal? And I was like, huh, people aren't actually born knowing what a terminal is and how to use it. And so rather than trying to teach the whole world how to use a terminal, we've invested a lot into this, the dev tool. The goal of dev tools is that you can stay in R. You don't need to switch out to use a terminal if you don't want to. Other big workflow difference between uh, packages from CRAN and your own package, you're going to use dev tools load all a lot. This is kind of a simulation of the package building and lo loading process. It's a simulation because it's designed to be as fast as possible. It's not 100% accurate, but it allows you to build this like iterative loop where you try something out in the code, load it, and then you can experience it in the console. I think this is one of the, the diagrams uh, that I like the best, although as I look at it now, it looks kind of vaguely sexual. Um, <laughs> but really, like the, these are the, the, four, the four functions, the four keyboard shortcuts, Command Shift L, Command Shift T, Command Shift D, and Command Shift E, that this is your life as a package developer. You write some code, you edit some code, you, you load it, you run it. Once you've done some interactive experimentation with it, you write some tests, you check those tests work. Uh, you write some documentation, you look at that documentation, everything in DevTools and the surrounding packages is designed around this idea of like tight feedback loops. You might not know exactly what you're trying to do, but you can try it out, see what happens, and iterate. If you want to learn more, uh, I have no I assume we're nearing the end of the talk. Uh, if you want to learn more, uh, you can, the best place to start is devtools.rlib.org. We've got some great cheat sheets there that were newly updated. I think they are hopefully included in the cheat sheets you got in the conference. Uh, newly updated, all the latest advice on our workflow. And uh, we're not finished. So now we're going to talk more <laughs> about testing. How much? We've got like seven minutes. Okay. Okay. We've got quite a lot of time left. So again, like one of the things, as I said earlier, like one of the, I think, things that we have learned as like we, the Tidyverse team, have become more experienced package developers, developers is just the importance of testing. And one of the things, one of the reasons that we've kind of exposed ourselves more to tests in the wild is now one of our policies is, is that if we make a breaking change in a Tidyverse package, a change that breaks causes packages on CRAN to no longer pass our command check, we are going to give you a pull request to fix that problem. And what that means is we are now like parachuting in to some random package on CRAN that has some random failing test and trying to fix it. And like, this is challenging for me because I like to make things like clean and perfect from the ground up and I want to like rewrite everything, but I'm just going to put my blinkers on and be like, here's one tiny problem, let's fix it. But this has like forced us to see like what are the problems that people are actually having in real life? And that, like one of those problems we see is like how do you manage state and test? Like sometimes you need to, sometimes your functions depend on things that are happening in the world outside of your function arguments. Uh, if you're modifying options, then if you do this the wrong way, this is going to affect like every other test that happens after this. So we've been continuing to build out the with our package, which is going to let you just temporarily make those changes. The changes are going to be scoped to the current function. As soon as that function is over, the changes will revert. The other big challenge is like code that lives outside of tests. So if your foofy2 does that test fails, and now you want to create a minimal reprex, 
you're wading through like lines and based on my experience of cramp packages, tens, hundreds, or possibly thousands of lines of code in this file trying to figure out exactly what does this test depend on. So tests, are unlike functions, it's okay to have a little duplication in your test. It's not so bad to copy and paste in your test because you are not like, they're, they're, they're generally less, de less coupled. Like if you change one test, you don't have to worry about updating every single other test. So it's okay to do more copying and pasting so your tests are easier to understand in isolation and if there are problems, they're easier to fix. And it's always better to do this kind of like upfront rather than when you're trying to debug like this failing test which is causing your package to fail our command check on CRAN, you've got an angry email and you need to like fix this and you're cranky. Uh, it's so much more pleasant if you're prepared for like angry you in the future with these very simple uh, tests rather than trying to have to do them on the fly. We've also continued to revise our advice on like where do you put stuff that can't live just in the, in the test. If you're duplicating code in your test and you want to remove that, where do you put it? Uh, helpers uh, run by uh, both load all and test, so they're available interactively. So when you're interactively uh, interacting with your tests, uh, they're available to you then, not just when they're test running. Go faster. Okay, go faster. <laughs> so uh, we also have just continued to learn more about how do, you, how do packages uh, survive in the wild for long amounts of time. I've been kind of joking that like ggplot2 is about to turn 18, so it's time to emancipate it, and it's just going to be responsible for its own maintenance <laughs> in the future. <laughs> but as many of you probably experienced in tidyverse packages already, we're moving to this explicit acknowledgement that there's some life cycle behind, behind functions. Functions will stay in the stable uh, phase of the life cycle for a long time, but sometimes we need to get rid of them and we don't want to get rid of them quickly so everyone has a chance to accommodate. So now we're moving through this process of, of deprecation. We're also huge believers of checklist, checklists in the tidyverse. So whenever we release packages, we call this function called use uh, underscore release issue. That creates this beautiful checklist where all you have to do is uh, work down this list. Uh, you guys are really not sharing as much as the other room, so uh, that's, that's a you problem, not a me problem. Uh, and <laughs> the, the, the entire package development ecosystem is no longer just a product of the Tidyverse team. So I you know, really want to appreciate everyone who has contributed to the books, to the packages, whether that's with code or issues or ideas or feedback. Like this is a community effort. We love uh, the help we get from others. Uh, and here is a photo of me and Jenny in Iceland. And <laughs> it is very cold in Iceland compared to where I am used to, uh, but not where Jenny and is used to. We went to a uh, uh, really, there's a really cool uh, place in Iceland called, and I'm blanking on the name, the Sky Lagoon. Uh, in the Sky Lagoon, there's like this kind of like, it's a, a hot springs thing. There's like a Vancouver room, which is where Jenny's from. It's like cold and raining. Jenny loved that room and I hated it. And there's also like the Houston room, which is like the sauna where it's extremely hot and, and humid and I loved it and Je Jenny hated it. So again, if you want to learn more, uh, our packages is the place to be, and that is it. Thank you.